The Essential Education Projector Range from Hitachi sponsors ICT programs. Doncaster in South Yorkshire, a town with engineering in its DNA. Annapolis in America, the setting for an international robotics competition. Students from two Doncaster schools, Camps Mount and Ridgewood, have just six weeks to design and build a robot. Yeah. It's either going to be a complete success or a complete disaster. Their machine will be up against the best. This is an international event. This is huge. This is the biggest thing a technology department can get involved in. There are inevitable technical problems. We're running out of power in the batteries, which is proving a, a huge problem for us. There's pressure. Tomorrow and the day after, we need to allocate to programming and testing, so we've only got today a lot of pressure. And there's pride at stake. Today, we've learned, obviously, that have worked, has it? But it can't, it can't fail on there. For the students, it's a massive challenge. It's my first time drawing. There's thousands of people here. We've got to perform in front of thousands of people. And for the teachers, it's a mix of huge responsibility. You too should be there. You need it now and moments of pure elation. I'm not missing my lessons at the minute. <laughs> Camps Mount and Ridgewood schools are both specialist technology colleges. And their core strengths, engineering and computing, are about to be given a stern test. The schools have combined to enter the first robotics competition 3,000 miles away in Annapolis on America's east coast. I'm Chris Lindsay, Head of Design and Technology at Camps Mount Technology College. This competition actually started four or five weeks ago now when the kit arrived from America. We're doing the engineering part of this robot, getting the thing to actually move. The brains of the robot, the control of it, is actually being done just down the road at Ridgewood School. It is such a massive opportunity for them and you don't know what this project might lead to in the future. Now for many of our students, there's a good chance that this really could be a life-changing experience. A total of 28,000 students from all over the world will work in hundreds of different teams. Each team must design, build and pilot a robot capable of playing a basketball-type game. Entrants work with a kit of 350 common parts supplied by the American organisers. It's basically a box on four wheels. Now, this robot has to store ten balls. We're planning to use some netting, and this netting is going to direct the ten balls into this uh, wooden firing chute that we've got in the middle. And one ball is going to drop down at a time. Then we've got this pneumatic piston, which is going to push forwards into two spinning wheels. Now, these spinning wheels are going in opposite directions, and hopefully they're going to fire the ball out at quite some speed. The students actually modelled this. They attached uh, spinning wheels to the end of two electric drills, held them firmly in position, and we were feeding balls in and firing them across the workshop. We found that that worked very well. It's the first time the South Yorkshire team has entered the competition and they've just six weeks to perfect their design and test their robot before it's packed in crates and sent to America. In my opinion, we need maximum control over when and where we aim those balls. They've spent the last four weeks assembling the hardware. Now only two weeks are left to program the software and carry out final tests. Oh, great stuff. I'm Michelle Marks. My job is uh, second in technology. We've got engineering status, um, which means that there's not only a lot of investment in the school, but also we've got a lot of talented pupils here within this area of technology. It's on there. 
So it stops the second bar from dropping yeah. down. There are thousands of teams competing. Um, a lot of these teams have competed for a number of years um, and they've got all sorts of um, resources available to them. For example, there's a team working with NASA. But as a rookie team, I'm sure that they will uh, take that into consideration. So is it powered by the pneumatics then? Yeah. Right. So worried that we're not going to get there because there's development work to do, there's testing, there's trials. Pressure is on to really, you know, get this completed. The teams are made up of year 10 students from each school and they've got a secret weapon. Nearby Sheffield Hallam University has loaned them a top gun. PhD student Ben Apope. I'm Ben. I've been brought in here to help with uh, the programming. I um, encourage their ideas and when I see a good idea I actually say, oh, well, let's do that then. I'm really trying to get the best out of the whole team. And that is a challenge. So I think that's for more now. Yep. Let's have a look on the, on the laptop. We are going to program the robot and test the software. But now it's just a quick look, final look on the software, and then load it into the robot. It's either going to be a complete success or a complete disaster. So I'm going to stand success. well back just in case. <laughs> if the robot's going to hold its own in the contest, the firing mechanism must work well. So that's the first element to be tested. Okay. We need to press this trigger here, which allows the wheels to spin. <laughs> Instead of the wheel spinning like that, they were spinning the same direction. We just need to turn the motors around so that the ball spin the same way and it'll grab it and throw it. I'm Matthew and I'm on the Camps Mount team. So far I've been concentrating on mechanics and electronics, but I'm now moving on to pneumatics. I can't wait to go to America because it's my first time abroad and I'm just glad to have the opportunity. Let's give it another go. The competition judges will not only assess the quality of engineering, teams will score points for design excellence as well. So the robot needs a name and a brand. The team have settled on Doncaster Dreadnought. That this logo here would be the best to go on the front of the robot, certainly. Yeah. Yeah. Do you think? Yeah. It's got more impact and it's, um, it's clear who we are. We don't really need that much impact on the side as long as we've got it on the front. I'm Amy, I'm from the Ridgewood side of the team. I've been working on the publicity of the robot and on general mechanics of it. I'm looking forward to going to the States because of the new social experiences that we'll receive and just working generally out there. I'm pleased with that, Amy. You've made a really good job of that. That should go on the front and the back of the robot. We've ordered the T-shirts, so everybody, we've ordered enough for everyone. I'm really excited to get them. We'll all look corporate and in with a the robot then. It'll be brilliant. <laughs> the robot will look good. But will it work? A key component, the air pump, is proving temperamental. You can't get the air pump working, so there's something wrong there. Um, well, we think it's the fuse or something wrong with the, one of the relays. So we're, we're going to check that now. OK, there's a leak somewhere. Oh, yeah, we have this. this um, <laughs> Cheers for that. No, it took me hand off. The school hall is the venue for Dreadnought's first proper trial. I'm going to keep on measuring it from when it stops, from when I've told you to stop, until it does actually stop, OK? I'm Thomas, and I'm from the Ridgewood side of the team. My main role has been programming it, but I've also done the DVD media portfolio. I'm really looking forward to going to America because I want to see robot in action and also on the game field. On your marks, get set. But just 15 minutes in, they hit a big obstacle. What the battery's got? Battery's got. Today, we've learned, obviously, that hasn't worked, has it? But it can't, it can't fail over there. I think tonight, we've all had enough. We need to go home, refresh our batteries and come back to face the day tomorrow. With only three days to the shipping deadline, Dreadnought needs radical surgery. 
the mounting plate for the drive motors is obviously too wide, so it's outside of specification, it's greater than 28 inches. So now you've got to take off an inch either side to bring the robot within specification, making sure before you start that all the wires are out of the way with no time for repairs. That's the first time I've ever used one and it's we well, half an inch outside tolerance, we're up to 28 and a half inches rather than 28. I've got to go down that line there. Really Ready? No, I don't trust you, Matthew, so I'm going to get my That's fine. trusted protection. That's right, <laughs> Tomorrow and the day after, we need to allocate to programming and testing, so we've only got today a lot of pressure. As one problem solved, another emerges. There's only a day until Dreadnought needs to be crated up and sent, but the machine's firing mechanism is playing up yet again. Oh, are you taking it up to the hall, or...? Yeah. Not yet. Not, Not yet. yet. We have got to figure out what's wrong. The situation at the moment is that we're really up against it. We've got about two and a half hours till about five o'clock to get this thing finished. If hit a glitch, it means poor old Ben's in there, really up against it, working his absolute socks off with the kids there. And really what we want this afternoon is to get it up there to test, but we can't do that until we've ironed out this problem. Something else triggers the, the wheels to spin. Right. We don't know exactly what yet. We've all got to the stage now that we're, we're, we're feeling a bit tired, we're feeling a bit worn by it, OK? But we can't let it wind us down. This is a fantastic opportunity for us. And we'll show that we're up for it and get us enthusiasm up. OK. So are we up for it then, folks? Yay! Ben makes a breakthrough. The problem's hard to find, but thankfully easy to fix. It's a set of crossed wires. It should, it should stay in this loop. We were so relieved, so relieved, when we just put the wires the right way and then all of a sudden the robot just sprang to life and started doing everything exactly right. It was, it was fantastic. The team makes the most of the few hours remaining before shipping for final trials. In the competition, they'll get points for how well the robot negotiates obstacles. Can Dreadnought mount a ramp? Two or three problems at the minute, the main one being we can't get up the ramp. There's not enough traction, not enough grip to get up there. Second problem is we're running out of power in the batteries. Now, we've only got about an hour for testing now, and the batteries take 13 hours or so to charge in full, which is proving a, a huge problem for us. So we'll just have to see how it goes. They're out of time. Any remaining problems will have to be tackled once they arrive in America. It's shipment day. Where's the other battery? And everyone lends a hand to get Dreadnought, batteries and a toolkit securely packed away. We're dying to get on this last screw. <laughs> They've hit one deadline, but the biggest challenge is yet to come. I think for the teachers, we're feeling a real sense of relief. It's just been such tremendous pressure, keeping this whole thing going, keeping everybody working hard. But we've got there. The thing is that the real challenge is, is yet to start. It's not arrived in America yet. We've not arrived in America. We're just right at the bottom. We are learning as we go along. And uh, we've got a lot to prove when we get out there. Dreadnought has landed in the States, and now the Doncaster team is here too. Here we go, guys. They make friends quickly with an American team. The shuttle's not running, I'll send the bus back and we can go pick up back, pick up the other part of the team. But only now does the real scale of the challenge hit home. 
when we walked in the lobby and we just saw all the teams, they were absolutely huge. And when we walked into the breakfast room, all the team was just set out. And it just made our team look really tiny. <laughs> when we get there, I think we're going to have a team talk, first of all. And then we've got several jobs that we need to do with Robot. And then we'll also have time for testing. So we'll be able to properly run it in a full-size court. It's my first time drawing. And there's thousands of people here. We've got to perform in front of thousands of people. Today is a day for unpacking, assembling and testing the robot. It's massive. Oh my word. <laughs> the Americans seem to have brought a full workshop each. It's a bit weird. What's the point in bringing a circular saw? We're safe, everybody. <laughs> this is a lathe, a pillar drill and a circular <laughs> saw in one handy little knife. The competition starts tomorrow. The toolkit, including screwdriver, is inside the crate. So the first initiative test is to borrow a screwdriver. We borrowed it from Team 303. We thought we'd be getting a power one, but they're using it. So the sooner we get this created, the sooner we can do everything we need to. You're looking at the other robots, I think we're going to, to be very successful with four robots. I'm really pleased about it. Chris isn't quite so confident. Well, I'm just a little bit worried about the competition. I mean, some of these robots are looking incredible. I mean, they're so far, so much further advanced than what we've done, but, you know, something to aspire to, I suppose. We've just been announced as a test now. Oh, my God! <laughs> Come on, let's get in there. Testing takes the form of friendly matches. Yeah. Dreadnoughts paired with a couple of other teams. Here we go. The robots are essentially playing a game of basketball, with points for baskets scored in high and low level goals. And there are bonus points for blocking and ramming maneuvers. Yet more points are awarded for obstacles scaled. Dreadnought gets a great start, scoring into a low goal almost immediately. But the celebrations are quickly cut short. Dreadnought's balls are jammed in the hopper. OK, you bash it into a wall, foul this lot of balls, and then shoot. Can we just hit another robot to shake them off? Go, go on, go! Smash them. With seconds remaining, Dreadnought goes for a ramp worth 25 That's points. It. Speed. Oh. We never got up. I mean, this morning it's been absolute chaos, really, from the second we arrived. We've taken part and we weren't totally prepared for that. One of the main jobs that we've got to get done straight away is repairing or replacing this net. The balls when we are on the field then, did not go down the chute. One did, the next nine got jammed. I don't think the robot is going to get up the ramp. I think the wheels are going to spin. Your job, get some grooves, get some tread put onto those tyres. Maxi, you're obviously looking after the pneumatics. There's no problem there with the pneumatics at present. So we've really, really got to rise to the challenge, everybody. All we've got to do now is get the thing measured length, width, height, and get it weighed. And once that's done, if everything's OK, we're ready to compete tomorrow. Dreadnought's size is fine. Oh, my God, it fits. That is unbelievable. It looked much wider than that box. Look much wider. I'm so glad it's gone in. Well done. But its weight is a big problem. Seven pounds over. Emergency modifications required. I'm just going to weigh this, see if it weighs anywhere near seven pounds. But we've just weighed and got clearance, so the robot weighs fine. We think it's past the inspection, so oh, thank goodness for that. I think what we all need now is some food, drink and then bed. A good night's sleep, ready, refreshed, ready for tomorrow. It's the first day of the competition, and now it's for real. Complete with all American razzle dazzle. What one of the first teams we're competing against? They're over there. In fact, they're, they're in top hats and tails. They've really gone to town. You know, it's absolutely fantastic. Some of the stuff they're wearing. Yeah. 
It's Dreadnought's first real action. And it performs well. Yeah, well done. Well done. That was good. The team check their place on the leaderboard. Team 18. It's not bad. It's not bad. It's, not bad. it's like half the table. We'll go back up. Yeah. We're in the top third. We're in the top three. About so. 23rd. Oh, yeah. Out of 64, so it's quite good. Top three. That's it. Can you cut another guard, please? That's we'll it. make another one. If we have to make one every time, that's OK. We're not bothered. The staff are impressed with the event and the benefits for pupils. Anybody that teaches in a, a technology-related subject watching this will want to know how they can be part of this event because it's absolutely huge. This is a, an international event. This is huge. This is the biggest thing a technology department can get involved in. Beef and tomato, I'll swap. I don't know what that is. After lunch, another match. But first, the troublesome ball firing mechanism needs yet more work. We're, we're putting the motors a bit closer together so we'll get more power when we're actually shooting. So that means that we can shoot from, from our side of the field into the opponent's goal, which will save us some more time, which would be a very good, very good improvement. Hey, that's great. Pleased about that. Once more into the breach. But Dreadnought's balls are missing the targets. And it's harming their placings. even though we didn't win. At the minute, I'm hoping that we can finish in the top half. That's my aim. You know, there's 64 teams here. I want to be in the top half. And we've just moved into the bottom half. We've got to get back up. The Dreadnought team adapts their tactics and their robot on the run. That last round, the balls were firing out faster. Yes. They were firing out faster. But because we drove closer to the target, the balls were bouncing yeah. and they were hitting above the goal. Yeah. So we've either got to fire from further away we'll do. or we'll do. we don't fire so hard. We might have to move forward a bit, but we might, that's what we're testing now. I think she's enjoying the scent too much. <laughs> We're really, really, really messing with the robot now. We're really changing things, trying everything. We're not giving up. <laughs> now, we have a four-wheel drive, but we don't get on the ramp, and we have really, really bad steering. So we said, OK, if we don't get onto the ramp, then let's just have a two-wheel drive, and we'll just go and block other people from the other team getting onto the ramp. And that's another way of scoring points. If it all works, it should be good later on. The nerves are showing. We've got about 30 seconds to get out of here. OK, where's Phil? Go and find Phil. Phil. Get the laptop. Oh, my God. I've one job to do. Keep the kids together so we can find them at all times. We need to check. We need to check in the software. Chris has lost his driver. On the laptop with the programme. He's probably playing cards in the corner. We need, the air pump is not on. Let me, let me get it. 1933, 
11.23. You two should be there. You need it now. Yeah, it's been done. We've just finished putting the new wheels on, and we're going to get called up in a minute, so we just want to check if everything's working. It's crunch time. This final match will decide whether Dreadnought makes the cut and progresses in the competition. The machine's not perfect. The bumper on the side is not secure. Uh, it could potentially come off. We've not had time to get it on. If it comes off, it's going to stop us completely. But all they can do now is hope it holds up. Dreadnought's going well. It's really flying round. the battery, we lost the chain. <laughs> I'm not missing my lessons at the minute. <laughs> All right, this time in the... Get it, get it, <laughs> Hopes were high after a great final match for Dreadnought, but when the results came, despite a good late showing, there was disappointment for the Doncaster team. They haven't made the cut. Our team was a winning team and we really won. Uh, that's how I feel about the team. It's been just fantastic. And I'm really, really proud of all the students, all the teachers. They've done an amazing job. And I really hope that when they go back, their parents will be proud of them because they deserve to be proud of them. But despite the results, the team are pleased with a respectable performance and a great experience. OK, guys, uh, for us, the competition's obviously over. I said at the start of today that our aim was to win our two last events. We did that, we achieved it, we worked extremely hard and we won our two heats, our last two heats. So a big thank you from me and a big well done. Thank you. Essential education projectors from Hitachi sponsor ICT programs.